Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. So much has been happening on both the political and economic fronts in Nigeria. Even as President Mohamed Obuari has waited little time in defining the direction of his second term in office. What stands out from most of his recent decisions and pronouncements is that government needs as much money as it can get in order to continue to carry out its constitutional responsibilities. And right on cue, administration officials have been amplifying that message. It was also apparent from the president's budget presentation at the National Assembly last week that Nigerians will have to brace up for more taxes under the current dispensation. For questions that have been arising from this new development, we are now being joined by Senator Adeshaye Ogunlewe, a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress and former Nigerian Minister of Works. One of the first set of lawmakers under the current political dispensation, Senator Ogunlewe represented Lagos East Senatorial District between 1999 and 2003. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, yes, Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I'm very happy to be here. Well, again. Let, let's start with the, the main subject in that introduction, okay. which is the plan by the uh, federal government to expand revenue base, reduce uh, over dependence on. Uh, oil revenue, given the volatility of, the, uh, of oil prices in the spot market, and then uh, raise tax. And in the fiscal strategy bill that was presented along with the uh, uh, budget proposal by the president, uh, there is this talk about VAT uh, going to be increased from 5% uh, to 7.5% next year. And then, of course, you have some other people proposing other forms of tax, in the Senate, there is a proposal for a communications tax. You know, that people will also be taxed uh, when they make phone calls or send uh, SMS. Is taxation the only or the best creative way to uh, expand revenue base? Thank you very much. Well, one would have wished that um, the president uh, has constituted the um, Economic Council before presenting the budget. Probably you will have had the opportunity of um, private sector input into that uh, budget. I, I'm not seeing enough of private sector input in that budget. And it is not only two taxation. Nigerians have gone through so much of this for long, but we are not learning what other people are doing in so many other countries that are progressing faster than us. For instance, what is the place of private sector in that budget. There is what we call ICRC, Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, which was established purposely throughout the world. I went to Harvard University to study before we established this commission, because the German Chancellor came here and told us the world has moved away from, go from government spending all its budget on infrastructure. The private sector involvement is much more important and higher. But we are not involved in the private sector. So what is the place of private sector in that budget? We are talking about taxation and all these things. There is no way anywhere in the world your budget will be enough to fund your infrastructure development. It's not possible. So what they, will have, they could have done is to push away most of the infrastructure into ICRC domain, that Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission. They have powers to process and concession most of this project in collaboration with the private sector. It's most, um, it, it, there must be, there, there is a lot to gain from but that that's, position. That's, but that's delicate, sir, because, you know, with the ICRC, um, I think that was started by the Obasan yes. administration. And what we ended up with was a lot of uh, abandoned projects, you know, because there wasn't enough, lack, enough knowledge about that process of concessioning. There and is. we've had many, many issues with it. It is the executive that has refused to give them that opportunity. It is the executive that wants to determine who is going to win the concession. And that's the problem. There is an international standard. There are people who are professional in concessioning all over the world. You must have an international advertisement where everybody in the world will have an idea of what you want to do. They will do a lot of checks on you and come and participate. There is so much money all over the world that they can channel to our infrastructure development. Budget alone can never develop this country. It's not possible. 
Well, I think that fact has been established by the government. They, they know that, which is why they borrow so heavily. In the budget proposal, we see this huge amount of money that's been dedicated to debt servicing. We see that the government would rather look to the people to fund certain things. Even the toll gate idea that was mooted, and I believe has since been put to the back burner, is yet another one of the examples that Dr. Abati just listed. There's real lack of creativity at the moment, what needs to, what would you like to see happen now? Well, we have to do things that have been done all over the world. We must learn. Why are they prospecting? Why are they moving ahead? Why are we moving back? It, it is not, it's not um, rocket science to spy on so many other countries. What are they, what, how are they doing it? That they are moving so far ahead. In terms of knowledge, there is nobody in the world that can compare with us. We have the knowledge, but to, to, to move the country forward, there are some people who are enjoy and they benefit a lot from this slow progress of Nigeria. I don't see why we should be in this position. Are I don't see it at all. I don't know. I don't, we are not supposed to be in that. We are, we are today in this world. In terms of knowledge, go to any part of the world. You see a Nigeria in a university, it will never come last. We are so devoted. But when it comes to our national development, we run into this sort of thing. Look at our communication system. Look at our number of television. Look at the number of radios we have in Nigeria. Which other countries have that kind of number? And they will. you run it perfectly without government involvement. Why is it done? Look at our banking system. Look at where the private sectors have already taken over. There is competition. Some people will be afraid in the past, in the past 30 years, 20 years, how can you give license to television, I mean, to private sector to run television. Ah, it is against our security. How can you give them to run radio? We are so scared. But suddenly, look at where we are in those areas now. We, are, we, are, we, we can compare with any part of the world. Yeah. Why are we not imitating that to do our infrastructure? Well, what is our problem? Well, is a good word to use. I think it's, it's quite relevant to think of when we think of the situation that's going on. Today, for example, or in the early hours of today, the IMF raised their projections for Nigeria's growth for 2020 to 2.5%, which is quite positive compared to the one9 that we were looking at before. But then you see that inflation has also raised as well due to several factors. And then you realize that you are still looking, of course, at double-digit inflation rates that we've been looking at for years, and you wonder where the real economic growth rate actually is. What monetary and fiscal policies do we need to see right now to actually make a change to this situation? Because 2.5% does not look bright when you're looking at inflation over 11%. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? The president presented a budget of the federal government. No reference to the budget of the states. No reference to the budget of the local government. I will have with the federal government, the, the president, have a, a comprehensive overlook of every money coming into Nigeria. Boss, then how much, how much is going to, legal, um, to the states? How much is going to the local government? What does he want the local government to do? What does he want the states to do? Niger State, in terms of land area, is more than the entire Southwest. What do you want them to do with the land? We have all what is desirable in, in our national development. We have the land, we have the water, we have the knowledge. The population. We have the population. We have everything. Somewhat, something must be wrong with us. Niger State alone can produce what Nigeria, what can feed the whole of West Africa in terms of land size. So we have a, what is our problem? We must sit down and identify our problem. It is not normal the way we are going, honestly, to say two point something uh, uh, growth yeah. in this country where we had six, six before. That's a joke. We went to seven before. Yeah. So what are we doing wrongly? Somebody must sit down and assess this thing. We are not what we, where we should be in the world. We, we, we are not there. And we should be very, very frank to ourselves. Any palliative talk, it is not in the interest of our children because they have no job to do. That what it was is in industrial policy in that statement. How many industries does he want to, to establish? What is the agri policy? You know, national budget. It's not about figures alone. It's not about transition alone. It's an opportunity for you to tell the, you know, the trust of your policy. Agri, this is where we are today. In another year or so, this is what we, are, we, we should be. 
This state is producing cashew. This one is producing um, rice. This state will not be able to produce this number of, of, of tons of rice. You, you must give Nigeria this, this level of confidence that we have a government. If you say in another one year, where will we be? Who is going to predict now? Well, but I, I think we can safely assume if we're having a conversation around the budget that maybe there's still something that can be done with it because it's not yet a final document. It's not been passed yet. And you refer to the Economic Advisory Council. Yes. Uh, you seem to have so much faith in that council. Um, what kind of difference do you think that Economic Advisory Council can make? Because we've always had you know, advisory bodies. Uh, sometimes nothing comes out of, uh, of the process. But you know they have a lot of knowledge about what is happening all over the world. They, you have, they, they, it's a misgrill of academicians, of practitioners, people who believe have been involved in economic development. They've learned it. They've practiced it. But they should now tell the president a little bit of what to do to have to progress in this country. Like private sector participation, where is their position in this budget? What do you want them to do? What are you pleading that they must do? They must be involved in. There was no reference in whatever form to the Dangote refinery that is going on. That will bring a lot of economic prosperity to this country. I will have the president has a knowledge of all the small, small um, businesses going around and plead with them and acknowledge them. Acknowledge their, their, their involvement and their, what they are, they are doing and bring them along in national planning. Nobody can wish away that level of infrastructure going on there. And there are a few of, of them going, uh, going all in over, no, but we don't know what is going to be their contribution. Somebody must do a research in this country. The private sector is doing a lot. Look at the creative industry. Look at what you are doing as communication industry. What is your, your input into national development? No reference was made, no acknowledgement. Well, Senator, we'll take a short break. When we return, the conversation would continue. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Senator Adisha Okunlewe. Sir, before we went on the break, you were talking about the, well, you were referencing the Economic Advisory Council and sort of bemoaning the fact that the private sector has been overlooked and hoping that this council can give advice to correct that. But how confident are you that that is going to happen when the president has not given them an open hand? He has, in fact, set their agenda. And top of that agenda is data collection, of all things. So what can they really do when they've sort of been limited by that mandate? No, 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 no. Data collection could go into, you know, who are, who are, who are producing what? What is innocent doing? How far has it gone? What can we do to invest in what he's doing? What, what about other companies? What about factories? What is Dan Kote doing? So many other... No, no, data is not an end in itself. It's, it's, yes. it's for planning it's purposes. It's for planning purposes. So let us know, you know, how many uh, TVs do we have in Nigeria? What are they doing? How can they communicate better to the world about Nigeria? Because some people believe Boko Haram. Nigeria is Boko Haram. I was at the University of Lagos. They have an international um, week. And you could not believe the number of expatriates that were there. For the first time, from Canada, from, from um, China, from um, Switzerland, from Ireland, from Iceland, from wherever in the world. And they were saying, this is my first time in Nigeria, and I'm very surprised that this is what we have. So I like the way that you've, you, you have said that's positive, that they can expand that mandate, because the president was specific. He was saying that multilateral agencies give wild estimates wrong figures. So he, he was targeting a particular sort of data yeah. collection. But you're saying that it can be expanded. That's yes, what because this is the data used to determine our GDP, our good rate. But they don't know how many um, um, telephone numbers we have. It's part of our world. How many do we sell? I mean, you know, but because they don't have knowledge of what is going on in Nigeria, they limit us to oil. I see we are only an oil producing nation. But then at we the same not. time, Senator, it's not necessarily a, a presidential um, economic research council. It's an advisory council. Do you, think, do you think that the role the president has given them is actually 
going to stop them from achieving what they can potentially achieve. This is a team that Bismarck Rowane, when he came on the show, described as economists and economic thinkers. And of course, they have pretty much they should have a huge mandate for themselves that they want to achieve in this role. But if they're just stuck to data collection, do you think they're really going to be able to achieve much? We're in several situations right now that we do need an advisory council on. For example, the, the going of closure of the Benin border to the closure of nearly every single border, for example, is not necessarily something that you would expect someone on that council to give as advice, maybe. So do you think that that data collection bubble is enough? No, no, no. no I, cannot, re I really don't think you cannot they are imagine restricted. the level of that composition, the, the, the knowledge that you can aggregate from those people. I'm not doubting it. So they will never be in the, you know, think of failing because they are now part of the government. So whatever they do will be, will be, a, be part of the progress or the regression of government. So they will not be able, they, they will never, never think of failure. The only thing, the, the next thing they can do all over the world is to have another council, research, science, technology, and engineering exactly. council. It's, everything is not economic council, no. How many research is going on? How can we fund our research? How can we have a breakthrough? How many universities do we have? That's what are what they I'm doing? Saying. What do you think they can do to assist this country? All over the world, university research is a base for our national development. No reference to it anymore. Mm -hmm. Federal government has about 35 universities, which are flagship universities. Lagos, Ibadan, Nsuka, Amadou Bello, Ife. You can use them as a fulcrum for national development. You do this research for us, this is the money. This is where you must be in another four years. You do this university, you do this research for us. This one, that is what is done all over the world. Research in university is part of our national development. It should have been mentioned in that national budget. Assignment to universities to, to have a breakthrough in one area or the other. It is far, far, knowledge is far, far more attractive in terms of GDP, in terms of all these things, than materials. How, yes. What is the, what, I mean, what is the uh, uh, base of, uh, of Singapore? What do they have? Knowledge is so significant. We don't appreciate knowledge in Nigeria. No reference to knowledge. How can you develop a nation like that when you are not mentioning the knowledge you require to develop. Absolutely. How do we do it? Which assignment must we give to each university? This is your assignment, this is where you must be. This is the money. Without research, how can you develop? No mention of research. But there is, it is work in progress. We'll get there one day. And I can assure you that composition. They will listen to us now. They have friends too. They have communities. They have professional bodies that they will listen to. And they will bring it on the table for Mr. to assist Mr. President. You just need another side of information that is not the Executive Com um, Council. And it's going to be very well, useful sir, to uh, uh, Leila alluded to something which I think uh, you know, we can also uh, take a look at, which is the decision to close uh, all land borders. And the directive by customs that imports can only come in now through uh, seaports or maybe the airports, but land borders have been shut down for government to, uh, you know, spend the period uh, to fix the uh, issues we have at the land borders. Now, the, it was the Republic of Benin, the border with the Republic of Benin, that was first shut down. And in the report by uh, National Bureau of Statistics, that has been cited, you know, as one of the reasons why headwind, headline uh, inflation has gone up uh, by about 0.22%. Now, inflation rate is 11.24%. Uh, uh, is it a wise thing to just shut down all land borders and restrict the opening for, for imports? Okay, who do you think should be responsible to tell, or to tell Nigerians the positive and the negative part of shutting the borders? I think the federal um, statistics and the custom, they should have done a lot of research this we have not done in the past 20 years. What are the reasons why you must close the borders? Tell Nigerians, what are the gains? What are the negative side of it? We should not be speculating to say, is it profitable for us to shut the borders? Is it, because somebody, nobody's looking at it. It's, it's something all over, when we mention all over the world, it is, it is, it is not an exaggeration. 
There must be somebody in that in those departments. I think the custom they don't do any any sort of research to tell Nigerians this is the why we are closing this border. These are the problems we have been having for the past ten years. These are the positive side of it. These are the negative side of it. So Nigerians bear with us. Okay, if you show the borders, most of these goods will not come in. What do we do as an alternative? We must be prepared for one year to produce more, enough food for us to eat where you, know, you don't allow food to come from in public or Benin or Niger. So who is, who is supposed to, to tell Nigerians? It is not magic, all these things. It is about planning. It's about research. It's about being anticipatory of the possible consequences of what you, what you have to do. If you know it is rice, it is uh, chicken, it is turkey, the price that will be affected, try to grow chicken, try to grow turkey, so that when you close the border, they are not coming in. <laughs> you know, if, you know, this thing is planning. It's, it's about planning. What is wrong with us? Why should we just close the border and we are now saying inflation is going up? You know, elementary economy said, if there is this supply, and, I mean, demand and supply. Once the supply goes up, I mean, once the, the, the supply, I mean, the, the supply is decreased, you expect people, you know, to spend more money on what they do to survive. These are the things we should have identified for one year and prepare for it, and then we we'll close the border. Nigeria will not feel the impact. But maybe it was so sudden, and nobody is telling Nigerians the implications. Okay, bear with us. In another six months, if you are eating chicken, these are the states that have invested in chicken production or turkey to substitute the import. And we have the people, we have the land, we have the the the, the private sector alone can feed the entire you know, nation. Their, their main uh, explanation is that this was done to check smuggling. You know that a lot of goods come in, and that uh, uh, since the closure of the of the uh, border with Benin, for example, they claim that the smuggling of uh, petroleum products has reduced. Well, that is goes without saying. Ghana sell petrol is two hundred and forty-five. All our neighbors sell for. But below, I mean, above 300 naira, and we are selling for 145 naturally. The, the drive will be to feed them. That's that is the, the problem. What a, 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 an entrepreneur will do. So, we, if there is this disparity, what must we do? They said we should remove subsidy. We don't want to remove subsidy, but we are all our petrol is being used to subsidize the economy of our neighboring countries. What must we do? We know this is going to happen. Because they are going to suffer there, and they are going to. I saw in the, in the video they are attacking our embassy in the Republic of Benin because they, they couldn't believe what is happening to them. They are not prosperous in whatever form without Nigeria. They import rice they cannot eat. They import chicken they are not, and they smuggle them to Nigeria. Well, the big market is here. Yes, but Senator, we'll take another short break. Thank you. And when we return. Uh, the conversation will continue. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Senator Adesheye Ogunlewe. So before the break, you were talking about the lack of planning that took place before our land borders were closed. But how do I put this? How do I phrase this? The lack of planning, as, you, as we would describe it, might not actually be a lack of planning. The federal government might have planned or factored in the shocks to the economy, as long as certain people are not the ones bearing it, as long as it's the masses who are bearing it. Our ruling class might not necessarily care that much. The thinking, from what I see, because these are natural, predictable consequences of certain policies. So the thinking, from where I'm standing, is that the people will bear these shocks. And I think the thinking there is to do with sacrificing for the development of the nation, similar to what's obtained in some of the Asian tiger economies. However, there's also a lack of sensitivity that I find. Look at the comments that was recently made by the uh, Minister of Agriculture, Nanono, saying there's no hunger in Nigeria. With that kind of thinking, the government will drop the hammer and suddenly enforce a land border closure when you think that all is well in the country, when really it is not. The people bearing the weight of these policies can barely support any more hardship. What is the disconnect between the government and the people that they are supposed to serve? You know, I'm, I'm a politician, and there is no excuse 
for anybody in the executive to make the mistake of saying there is no hunger in the land. It is not, uh, to my mind, it is insensitive for anybody to say that. Hunger is not defined with what you as but by someone here, it's hunger is defined as when you go on the street, you see somebody selling the, the capital involvement in what he's selling. It's less than 5,000 naira. They, they, they hawk on the street. And when you, you, you aggregate whatever they are selling on the street, and you imagine how much they will gain, maybe two naira. This is what we did for our parents when we were younger. You were selling on, on the street too. We are selling dodo. We are selling akara. I can. I sold all these things. I sold rice. That's but uh, plantain and bean cake. Yes, and bean cake on the streets. When we were younger, the what, 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 what the gain is so minimal. But we were surviving. Open for a greater tomorrow. So we should not say because if you go to a rural area, maybe the man was referring to Abuja or Lagos Central or something. Or his own household. Or his own household. <laughs> More like it. Honestly, if you... I buy a car at Ojota in the morning. I like it because I, I, I go there. Come and see the number of people queuing to buy 15 naira a car and, 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 and bread. They match it together. They eat. That's what they eat for the day. I ask them, is it all? They say, yes, I'm okay. Somebody can be okay with rice and dodo in his own, and chicken. Somebody that is down there asking what he has eaten in the morning, you will not believe it. So let us not be insensitive to the plight of the majority of Nigerians. Okay, how do you now say 100 million Nigerians are, in, are under poverty? If they can eat well, they, can, they are okay. So they are not poor then. <laughs> they are poor. Very, very poor. Very, very poor. We must move them out. How many children have dropped out of school because of ordinary? Look at what the, the Emmy of Kano said. For five dollar, five dollar only, a child was lost because they could not, you know, pay. So are we now talking about that one eating? So poverty is not eating alone. Poverty is the whole economic situation of a typical family mm. that pay three hundred thousand naira for a child in, in crash. How does it survive? Look at Rwanda. Every private school has closed down because of government policy on public schools. We never attended private schools. And we are, we are, we are with today. What is wrong with us? Our public schools were the best in Africa. If you went to King's College, if you went to CKC, if you went to... to um, I want to add my own secondary school too. <laughs> Those were the flash. I mean, of, of then you of, didn't go to a public school, did you? I so did. Oh, okay. I'm a key seeker. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. okay. So public schools were, if you went to private school at that time, we look at you as if you are not a brilliant person. Yes. Or if you, if you just went abroad to school, where? You went to Ibadan. You went to Ife. You went to Insuka. Those were the pride of the nation. You went to Lagos. Or you went to Amadou Bello. The, 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 the cross of our... The people developing this nation now, they attended those universities. But suddenly, going abroad became something must be wrong. We must sit down and address this issue. We are not supposed to be like this. Absolutely we are not. not. And still on the topic of the closure of the border as well, and the government coming out to state that we should either go through the seaports, etc. It, it uh, reminded me actually of a new project the government are working on with Bakasi Seaports and how the federal government have approved $2 billion for this project. Now, it's often argued that why are we building a new deep water seaports when we can dredge water or we can dredge for existing seaports already? And it looks again like the government is abandoning certain projects, as we always do, to make room for another project that maybe we cannot afford. That is one side of the argument. Of course, the other side of the argument is that we need more seaports in Nigeria. It's a deep water seaport. It's a good investment and Nigeria needs to do it. What is your take on the Bakasi seaport development? Do you think Nigeria right now should be spending $2 billion on this or should we be looking at cheaper options and more sustainable options for existing projects such as dredging to create deep water ports? That is why the council research science Engineering and Technology Council is desirable in this country now. We have Society of Engineers. We have Academic of Engineers, Engineering. We have Society of Science. We have so many, you know, 
um, research um, institute that can tell us why Bakasi. It is not you sit down on the, on the, on the table and you now say Bakasi is good. Somebody must have done a lot of research on it. And this is what we lack in this nation. Before we make a policy, we don't have deep knowledge of what we are doing. If we have, there will be no, they will have told us enough why we needed Pakasi uh, support, deep support. Why we needed this, why we needed this. What is the projection? I was going through a document that I have in about 25 years ago, national development. You could see where we are, we are to, supposed to be in five years. We are supposed to be in the 10 years. This magic of somebody just coming in to talk about a project that is not in your national plan is a problem for Nigeria. And we must address well, it. Senator, earlier on you talked about infrastructure. Yeah. You focused a lot on infrastructure and the private uh, sector. And you were Minister of Works yes. at the time. Now, one contentious issue is the, uh, uh, the construction of federal roads, the construction and maintenance or rehabilitation of federal roads in states of the Federation. And many of these states, uh, the expectation is that if the roads are bad and they fix the roads, then they get reimbursed by the federal government. But recently, we had the, uh, the Minister of uh, Works saying that any state government that uh, constructs or rehabilitates or spends money to maintain federal road should not expect any reimbursement. Is that a good policy? Why well, does the federal government have the capacity to fix these so-called federal roads all over the country? I was a victim of this argument then. Because state government, if they don't involve you, you have director of works, controller of works from the federal government in every state. We have the staff there. If you believe you want to participate in the maintenance of road, contact that officer. Contact him. Do proper, you know, um, costing. Okay, valuation. Yeah. Of costing, valuation before you commence. You cannot just tell the federal government, I have spent 30 billion, Go and pay, come and pay me. Who approved it for you? Who did the measurement? It, when it gets to the National Assembly, they will not approve it. So where will the minister get money to pay you? National budget is not the responsibility of the minister. The minister will just propose the money there for reimbursement. And somebody from that state will say, no, this, this was never done in my state. Don't give them money. What will the minister do? So what we are saying is a synergy between the state government and the federal government. If you want to maintain their road, call the controller of works there and do it together so that it can be part of their own program, not SS. They've given Ministry of Works 150 billion dollars or so. The total contract ongoing is to, it's over two trillion. Where will you now get money to pay you for a project he did not put into his own budget? Those are the, the contradictions in the federal system we are running. You must talk to the controller of works in your state. If you are going to, it must, it must be his project, not your project. When you, it is his project, even if you fund it, they will give the controller this concession and he will give you the money. But if you just go ahead and construct the road without the concept or cooperation of the controller of works, you will not get you are on your own. And that is the tendency of state government. They will say we have spent 100 billion naira. If you put it in the budget, the National Assembly will remove it. So it is a question of budgeting and how much is available. Can it afford to give all the money to the state where it's not part of its own plan? It's a difficult thing. So there must be cooperation. You also have your own director of works in your state. Let them go to the ministry and talk to the permanent secretary, talk to the minister that we have this problem in our state. What do you think? So that when they are doing their own budget, they factor it into it. It's not going to extra, extra money. You will incur budget, I mean, money on behalf of the minister or the ministry. And you want him to pay without the knowledge of what you have done. It's not going to happen. So this is a really important point that you're making, sir, because now the Senate is declaring a state of, or wants the federal government to declare a state of emergency on the nation's roads. These are the details that are often overlooked in how that can happen. But what are your thoughts on this phrase, state of emergency, with regards to the road situation? In Lagos as well, we have our governor 
Babajide um, Songolu declaring the state of emergency on Lagos roads. It all just seems unconvincing from the, from the public perspective. What are your thoughts on this? You know, my own training is quite different from the training of so many people. I work in Lagos State Minister of Works. I was the first managing director of Lagos State Public Works Corporation. So I'm in a public works person. I am not the same as somebody who was never involved in this sort of um, assignment. So if you don't involve public works in whatever you are doing, this is due to research. I have been there for long. The expatriates who are construction companies in Nigeria, they will gang up against you. Do work that will not last for two years because they are in business. They will make sure that they determine the rates we are going to use. It happened in 1977. We were in the Ministry of Works. And the government wanted to do so many roads in Lagos State. And before we knew what was happening, all the expatriates who were controlling asphalt production, you know, maintenance, can go up and determine the rate that they're going to give to the ministry. And I told them, this is foolhardiness. How can a government surrender infrastructure development to a private company when you have engineers who are more qualified in your ministry than those people that are working for the private people? So let us now buy an asphalt plant. So in Lagos State, we risk it. We bought asphalt plant, and we started to do the, the, most of these roads by the, the engineers in the ministry. And that was the, the, the basis of our sources. We tried it at federal level too, where we bought asphalt plants all for, all for the states and equipment. But suddenly, all those equipment disappeared. There is no way anywhere in the world where private company will determine the level of infrastructure of your company and you get through. You will be disappointed because they are, they are traders, they are business people. In the Federal Ministry of Works, we have first class engineers that could be made, made useful. Who's off to, 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 to do the roads? Senator, we do have to go on a quick commercial break. On my back, of course, the conversation will continue. Do stay with us. You're watching The Morning Show. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Senator Adeshe Ogunlewe is still with us in the studio discussing a number of issues. And so I was uh, about to take us on to the topic of defense because we've had a lot coming in the news today with regards to Looking at the budget allocation for defense at 100 billion naira, which is said to be 1% of the 2020 proposed budget, and people are kicking arms and legs at this given the state of insecurity in Nigeria. What do you see when you see this proposed allocation to defense in the budget? And how do you really think this government is faring when it comes to matters of insecurity? Well, it is, it is a little bit sad that we are still in this position in this country. If you recall, the federal government set up a, 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 an institution for manufacturing of um, military equipment. And it's still existing. And we have not seen any breakthrough enough from that institution. We still purchase almost everything from outside. Whereas this country that, are buy, that we are buying from, we are learning from us. 25, 35 years ago. So, and believe it or not, Nigerian military is about the best in the world. Why did I say so? When I was a minister, we had uh, a breakdown a, from the, a road from the north to the south was watched by, you know, by flood. And I called the then head of defense, Aguayi, and I said, look, we want to fix this road. Can you do it? He said, yes. And believe it or not, I, I advanced them with the money. Within two weeks, they put a pontoon on that, on that um, space. And vehicles were crossing back. They have engineers. They have everything. But so, it's just a Nigerian factor. Nigerian military should not be where they are today if we invest more on them. Who invented this cable that we are using, the phone? It's the military in America. American, almost everything they, 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 they use today were from their military, I mean, research. Um, 
we learned a lot from them. Let our military also be a research center for all these things that is happening in our country. They can cope. They can manage it. They can defeat Boko Haram. But who is in charge? Who is calling them? What do you need? What must we do? We have all the facilities. They should be producing most of these things internally so that we can be self-sufficient in the military wars. But look at where we are today. We still go to Pakistan. We still go to India to buy South Africa to buy most of this equipment. Second hand. Second hand. Second. Military hardware. Yes. Anyway, um, Senator, you were Minister of Works uh, 2003 to 2006. Yeah. If I recall correctly, it was during your tenure that the toll gates were removed. Yeah. And many Nigerians were very disturbed then because some of these uh, toll gates were really beautiful, big, you know, infrastructure all over the country. Now we're hearing that toll gates would uh, be brought back. Uh, is there any justification for this back and forth? you know, uh, failure to think through uh, into the future. One government comes, it takes one decision. Another government comes, it reverses the decision. For the records, two reasons, three. One, the president then, Obasanjo, wanted to increase the price of petrol from about 25 to 65 naira. And Oshio Mole was, the, um, was in charge of the... Uh, of the Nigerian Union of Labor Congress. Labor Congress. President Labor Nigeria. For one year, they went on strike five times because of this. Then we called them to, okay, what do we do? Okay, if you increase, we will not pay toll gate again. It's okay, let us increase and remove the toll gate because it's going to be double tragedy for all the travelers. And we, and we decided that is number one reason. The second reason is that at that time, all the funds being collected at toll gate were going into the federation account. So they were never isolated for road repairs or construction. It goes into the federation account and it's distributed and it's shared. So there was no visible reason to continue. But after the, before the demolition, I was sent abroad to go and study what did they do. I went to Harvard University. And we now put up ICRC infrastructure concession regulation commission they passed the bill the purpose of that commission is now to link up with the private sector concession each of these roads they are the ones to do the concession not the ministry not the government that is their own responsibility can you believe the former head of state of nigeria Shineko, was the first chairman of this commission to so, to see you know the, the, the degree of the confidence they put in that. So they will now determine how, what to do. Do the road, get your money, and make infrastructure available. Health services, petrol station, restrooms on the highways, lights on the road, depending on the, on the specification you give to them. But that has not happened. So it is not toll gate by government, no. It's toll gate by the private sector. Yes, but this time around, I mean, the are you aware that uh, the, of the any model that the government uh, plans to follow? I'm not. But yeah. all over the world, there is a standard. You don't get involved in tolling again, government, because if you get involved, the money goes into the federation account, and it's not useful for the maintenance and construction of that road or provision of all facilities or whatever you want to provide. So it is better for you to get experts. There are experts in this area. Concession, they, they get PAG on it, private public partnership. It is not new all over the world. This is where we should go. Uh, but, get the private sector but involved. The concessioning that Nigeria attempted, we ran into trouble with the roads because there were contractual uh, matters that became uh, a big issue. There were also issues about uh, who and who, the ethnic extraction of the uh, persons who won the uh, concessioning and all of that. And at the end of the day, um, Federal government, in the case of at least one uh, well-known uh, expressway, had to uh, take it out, take it back. All over the world, they, it is, they, they, they get into this because of inf interference of the executive. If you allow ICRC to do the concessioning, they have a process. You must advertise financial input, you know, technical. All these things must be assessed from the 
person that is applying. It's not one person. You just wake up and give it to one person without any, you know, design, without any, you know, we are, what we must do, what you must not do. What is your capacity to do this road? Where is your technical partner? Where is your financial input? You know, all those things must be assessed. Who is going to construct the road for you? Who is going to give you the money? It is not for you to give to an individual who will now take three, four years to, to, be th to think of what to do. <laughs> it's a profession now. This concessionary, it is not somebody's view. There are standards all over the world. There are people who have studied it. Private-public partnership is not new all over the world. It is the way you process it that will determine the success or failure of it. As if you are partisan, you run into trouble. As we start rounding up this conversation, I wanted to talk to you, sir, about APC's view that opposition politics in Nigeria is dead. Now, you started the Fourth Republic as an AD senator. You were a minister of works under PDP. You are now back with APC. What is your view on the way opposition plays politics in Nigeria? You know, there are too many personal interests in our political system. There is too much of funds, money. If you don't have money, you are handicapped in, 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 in the scheme of things. Indeed, Elumelu was not the, um, the choice of the party as the um, minority leader. But for what, whatever happens, he is now the minority leader. Governor Nwike believed that he has sacrificed so much for PDP not to be listened to, not to determine who is going to be the minority leader. But there is a quagmire now. You cannot wish away the strength and what UK can do if you don't give Chinda that position. Whereas, if you talk about skill, indeed, Ilumelu have cornered him and he's not the minority leader. Where is the opposition? But there is a party in place. We have uh, how many political parties? Over 70 political parties. So it's not just a question of uh, APC and uh, PDP. So why are these other political parties so silent? No, no, it is their number. <laughs> it is their strength. They want to survive. If you are too vocal, you can be injured in the process. You know, National Assembly is not where you go and play any form of rascality. You must listen to the leadership. And you can have some differences, but when it comes to the executive section, you, you give them your own view. But when you come to the open, you throw the line. But why do you think the APC are like sort of lamenting and complaining about the lack of an opposition? Surely as the ruling party, you shouldn't even necessarily really want that much of an opposition. It just seems like a lot of party politics going on here. Nigeria wants good government. Leave the politician alone. Let them quarrel. Let them argue. Let us talk about national issue. What would people eat? How would they survive? How would their children go to school? Whether there is opposition, there is no opposition. It doesn't concern my mother that is selling body, that is, his child wants to go to school or want to go to the hospital. That is the concern now. So no, but let the politicians do whatever they like. Whether there is opposition, there is no opposition. It's, it doesn't matter to average Nigeria. No, but we can't leave democracy and the various institutions to the uh, politicians. How do we deepen our democracy if we're even going to leave uh, uh, something as important as opposition politics? And, and let the election come now. When the election comes, policy. tell us yeah. there was no opposition. But Nigerians today is what to eat, how to go to school, how to have good health services. That is the concern of a family. And that should also be the concern of the opposition as well, that they're saying doesn't exist. What can they do? They are part of it. You will not get your allowance if you shout too much. <laughs> <laughs> so even for the politicians, it's about what to eat too. It, it, they have to survive. If you are not careful, you will not survive there. You will just be there. What a horrible system. You will pass. They, you, ah, look, opposition is only for election. One that is government. Everybody should be part of that government. If you begin to shout, how many, if we are on air, we cannot be saying all these things. You know it more than me. 
<laughs> the level of criticisms well, must be thank, limited now. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> On that note of what to eat. That, that, is, that is real is politics. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Practical yeah. politics. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.